to say you can't fight hate against you unless you are willing to fight hate against everyone else. You cannot be anti-hate and pro-civil rights only one way. So we rise, particularly since, we rise particularly since the incidents involved blacks that have been arrested and charged to say that we will not be silent and that we condemn any attacks, any hate crimes, any efforts by anyone to try and in any way impede the continuing move toward trying to heal whatever we have had to try and heal in the black and Jewish community. We are not unaware that there has been tension but we have also been those that have strived to work those tensions out down through the years. And this will not set us back. We will cooperate and stand with any move in our community to investigate hate crimes no matter who the hate it and no matter who the hate hurt. We want to be crystal clear as the elected officials from the governor to the mayor move on these issues, that we encourage members of our community to cooperate and stand for what is right and righteous. Let us not forget, as we pray today for the health of John Lewis, the congressman from Georgia, that he constantly reminded us that we're in the generation behind, that if it hadn't been for Goodman, Cheney, and Swerner, two Jews and a black, we would not have gotten the Voting Rights Act. It was Rabbi Abraham Heschel that marched for Dr. King. We cannot afford to be divided, and when there is wrong on either side, we must speak up, we must step up, we must stand up loudly and denounce it. Yes, we have had issues. Yes, there are going to be some on either side that are always going to bring up past issues. But let the word go forward yes. that we are not living in the past and we're not going to let some bring us back to the past. Right. We are going to build a future, yes. a future together where it is understood that hate anywhere is hate everywhere. Right. When you attack anyone, you're attacking you too. I called Rabbi Mark Snyder yes. and said to him, we need to convene and we need to make a statement right in Harlem where the last suspect was found and caught. Mm -hmm. Harlem's not a refuge for that. No, right. 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 He didn't come from Harlem, but anybody can't just run to Harlem right. and act like there's a refuge here. That's why ministers are here. Right. That's why those of us that fight. And so from the same stage, that we fought for uh, Diallo yes. and Abner Luima yes. and Trayvon Martin yes. and Eric Gardner from yes. the same stage yes. that we fought hate crimes yes. in Gina, uh, Gina, Louisiana. Yes. From the same stage, yes. we fight the hate crimes that have happened in Jersey City all the way to what happened in yes. Monsey. We fight hate, not just hate against one color or one kind. Before I bring the rabbi on, I'm, and I'm also glad to show that this is an ongoing situation. Reverend Green and others on our national board, Howard Tish, who is uh, the head, regional head of the American Jewish Congress, recently joined the board of National Action Network. This is even before this last wave, because this is something we're committed to. We should not have Dr. King's picture on the wall if we're not going to live up to what Dr. King taught. Now there are others that will say whatever they have to say. And we don't speak for everybody, but we do speak for ourselves. And we're going to speak loud and clear. I want us, before we hear from the rabbi, to hear from the, uh, the state president of the NAACP uh, state conference, the uh, legendary. <laughs> Hazel and Deuce. Thank you.
you, Reverend, for always standing up and bringing us together. You recited where we've been here before, and we are here today, as you say, to stand against hate. Let me say that 110 years old is the NAACP. They tried it in Niagara Falls and it didn't work. A white woman on Fifth Avenue called the minds together. The Jewish community has been a backbone for the NAACP. As Reverend Shopton said, we didn't start this this morning. It's been continuing. It's been a continuing of us building. He's right. Yes, there's been tension. Howard, we were there. Reverend Shopton, we were there. But when we were in Brooklyn, we were there with a loud voice against hate, against hate, bringing the community together. We will not allow anyone, anyone to tear us apart. Mm -hmm. Five branches of the NAACP is in Nyack, Spring Valley, Ellenville. They'll be there today with uh, our Senator Schumer. He's having a conference there today. That community will stand up also. We're going to stand up all over this country. And when Reverend and his staff call us together, you can see today with this leadership you have on this stage, nobody, but nobody will turn us around. Even if it was my son, I would be speaking out. Even if it was my daughter, I would speak out. Because the teaching of our Christianity tell us to love those who hate us, do good. And that's why we're here today, because we will continue to heal our communities. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, ministers, all uh, elected officials. For I know everyone is busy, but thank you for standing with us today. We are joined by the congressman. We'll hear from him in a few minutes, uh, Adriana Espiak. Uh, uh, who will also have some words. Uh, let us hear now from Rabbi Mark Schneider. Yes. Thank you, Reverend Sharpton. Thank you, dear Hazel, for those very passionate words. Friends, when you review, when you examine the civil rights era of the 1950s and 1960s, no segment of American society provided as much and as consistent support to African Americans and to Dr. King as did the Jewish community. As both Reverend Sharpton and Hazel Dukes articulated, that it was the historic Black Jewish Alliance that led to some of the greatest political and social changes in the history of our nation. Unfortunately, after the tragic assassination of Dr. King, that relationship began to spiral downward. It became defined by an element of conflict and not cooperation. But for the past 15 years, Reverend Sharpton and I have been working together to bring about a reconciliation, to bring about a strengthening of relations between African Americans and Jews so that in the city of New York, it is cooperation and not conflict that is the defining element in black Jewish relations. When I spoke yesterday with Reverend Sharpton, I reminded myself that a people who fight for their own rights are only as honorable as when they fight for the rights of all people. Yes. And to be standing here with such a distinguished group of civil rights leaders, I could not help but immediately accept Reverend Sharpton's invitation to join everyone here today. As Reverend Sharpton said to me yesterday how 
deeply disturbed he is by the anti-Semitic attacks on the Jewish community, particularly when many of these attacks have been perpetrated by members of the African American community. Friends, you'll find that Jewish history, and with this I conclude, one thing we have learned in Jewish history, wherever now, that casual Jews become Jewish casualties. And we cannot, we cannot fight our battles alone. And as we were there for the African American community and continue to be there, with the African American community, we need the African American community and its leaders to speak out, particularly this being the last day of Hanukkah, it's the festival of light. <clears throat> and just look at the light on this stage, the light of understanding and caring that keeps aglow the relationship yes. between African Americans and Jews. Yes. So finally, my friends, Dr. King was very fond of holding the words of the English uh, philosopher and statesman, Edmund Burke, who said that all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Today, I am standing among all the good people who are here to do something and to protect and to defend the Jewish community of New York. We thank you so much, Reverend Sharpton. <laughs> Rabbi Mark Schneider, let us hear from Congressman Adriano Espi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Reverend Hazel Loops. This is uh, a, another unfortunate crossroad in America. I, mean, I come here with a heavy heart. Um, several, over a year ago, we had uh, a white supremacist group uh, go up to Washington Heights, to Fort Washington mm -hmm. Avenue, over a hundred of them, walking distance from here, to a neighborhood that was traditionally, and is traditionally, a Jewish neighborhood. Many Jewish families settled there after the war when they fled Nazi Germany, when they fed, fled the Holocaust. They settled there. Uh, and with the years also surrounding that neighborhood, it became an immigrant neighborhood as well. Many immigrants from all over the world have settled in Washington Heights. It has the, the George Washington Bridge, which is the Golden Gate to New York City there. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that those white supremacists went there precisely because they knew the symbolic nature of that about a, a banner against immigrants, and they <clears throat> perhaps thought they will be they will place fear in our neighbors, but that's a resilient neighborhood. We came out the next day. And when the nation, the prestigious media outlet, did a foil on ICE to find out who they surveil, it turns out that the vigil that we had protesting the presence of those white supremacists who was surveilled by ICE. Mm -hmm. So this is an epidemic. This is an epidemic, and as, as Martin Luther King used to say, the silence of our friends, right? Mm -hmm. It's very critical. The silence of our friends. Those that spew hate do it in a very loud, noisy way. We can hear them, but we can also hear the silence of our friends when that happens. So that's why I'm here today because they will come after those of the Jewish faith tonight. Mm -hmm. And if we don't act, tomorrow they will come out after Christians. Yeah, that's right. And if we don't act, they will go after Muslims. Right. And if we don't act, they will go after immigrants. 
And if we don't act, they will go after Americans, African Americans. And if you don't act, they will go after the LGBT community. Right. And so we must not turn our heads. When they go after one of us, they go after all of us. And that's why we're here today. That's why we're here today. So I want to thank the Reverend, yes. Rabbi, uh, for bringing this forum. And we must sit down with law enforcement. And we must sit down with the leaders of the Jewish community, break bread, and come together so we can combat this epidemic. This is an epidemic in America. I'm not here to point fingers at anybody. We should not engage in pointing fingers either. This is something that we should resolve proactively, and that's why I'm here today, because I would not be silent. Because the problem is the silence of our friends. No there has been no battle in the last 15 years and possibly longer around eight crimes, whether it be anti-Semitic, whether it be anti-black, anti-Latino, anti-LGBTQ, anti-Muslim, that our Shoulder has not been shoulder to shoulder with Donna Lieberman of the New York City Civil Liberties Union. Brent Sharpton for bringing us together this morning to stand in solidarity with our sisters and brothers in the Jewish community that is seeing an unthinkable and devastating increase in anti Semitic violence. It is important and valuable for us to stand together and embrace our common humanity, our pain, and yes, our differences. And to commit ourselves to push back against the hate that has become too much a part of our lives. Whether that hatred is aimed at the other religion, the other nationality, the other who are not citizens, or who have another gender expression, identity, or sexual orientation. But it is also time for New Yorkers to do more than come together after this horrific anti-Semitic attack and say we stand with you. Yes, we do, we are brothers and sisters, but it is time for all of us to take responsibility. All right to call out anti-Semitism when we see it, to call out racism, to call out homophobia and anti-Muslim bias, whether it is the manifestation of a serious mental illness or when it comes from some radical fringe or from our own friends and neighbors or as happens day in, day out in the Trump administration when it comes from the President of the United States. Because when hate wins, we all lose. And it is time for us to dig deep and ask hard, hard questions, not least of which is, how can we ensure that people with mental illness and their families can get treatment that is so desperately needed and so unavailable? And it is time for us to dig deep and get to work building bridges and the respect and understanding that follows between many different racial, ethnic, gendered communities that make New York the beautiful tapestry that it is or that it can be. When people know each other as people, we are less likely to fall prey to demonizing and hate. When our kids play together, and go to school together. Yes. When we live in the same neighborhoods, yes. we are all less likely to be bullies and haters. Yes. And when adults set a good or bad example, we all know children will listen. Yes. Historically, Jewish people and African American people have stood together to fight back against bigotry yes. and hate. Yes. We do so again today. Yes. We must and we will build the biggest tent imaginable to get this job done. We have no choice. That's 
Thank you. Right. Yes. President of Impact, Reverend Johnny Green. Because of the distinguished and impeccable leadership of Reverend Al Sharpton, we have all been summoned to the House of Justice today to stand with our sister, sisters and brothers across denominational affiliation. There are two words uh, that was customarily used by the ancient Greek to represent time. One was chronos, and the other represented the moment, kairos. Teach. This is a kairos moment. I don't know how any religious leader, any rabbi, any pastor worth his or her salt, any activist or any so-called activist can stand on the sidelines That's right. That's right. and not get involved when we see hate right. at this level against our Jewish brothers. Right. Come on, Pastor. We are New Yorkers. That's right. And one of the things that we have learned over time is that hate against one New Yorker is hate against all New Yorkers. It's reprehensible what happened in Jersey City. It's reprehensible what happened in Monse. I'm here also representing the president of the Empire Baptist Missionary State Convention who stands with us today who is the president of more than 600 Baptist churches throughout the Empire State. Mm -hmm. We have other clergy representatives who are here to say to our Jewish brothers and sisters and to all communities that we are unified mm -hmm. in this fight against hate yes. and in this fight against violence That's right. in New York. That's right. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you Dr. Sharpton, for bringing us together. Yes. Thank you for being the visionary leader who understands when it's time for those of us who call ourselves leaders to come together. We have preachers, we have politicians, and other elected officials who are here today because we are unified like never before. Thank you, and God bless you. I neglected to recognize Aisha Shakur, who represents our largest effective grassroots anti-violence organization. And one of the things that she reminds us of, one of the reasons it's important for our faith leaders, elected leaders, and those of us with media platforms get involved, is that as I talk to some of our staff about reaching out to some of the hip-hop artists, and we're going to do that. But these are not young people right, right. that have That's been right. accused of these crimes. That's right. We keep stereotyping youth. These are people in their 30s and up That's right. yeah. that the ministers and those that have a media outlets right. should be influencing. That's right. Right. Don't keep stereotyping everything Thank in some 16-year-old young black That's boy. Right. That's, That's not right. the case. Before we take questions, I would like to uh, ask all of us to bow our heads whatever faith we believe in and let us pray for the recovery of those in Monse that are still facing a struggle. The psychological and physical impact is indescribable. I faced a knife in 1991 over hate and no one knows better than I do how that might feel. And I cannot get rid of the hate that stabbed me and ignore the stabbing of others. Some said on staff, Reverend Al, if we step out, they're going to attack me, they're going to try to dig up and distort things from years ago. I thought of what Dr. King said. He said that he was challenged to go to a certain city and the question was told, 
I was raised to him, if you go, what will happen to you? And he said, I decided to go because if I did not go, what may continue to happen to them? So all of our critics, shoot your best shot. But I will not be silent in the face of hate. And I will not be silent. Our, our fight for freedom will not be a segregated fight. Right. We don't fight for blacks only. Right. We don't want blacks put out, but we're not going to put others out. Right. Just like they marched in Charlottesville to maintain a Confederate flag of a slaveholder, they marched spewing hate against Jews. Right. It's a shame when haters understand what we have in common more than we understand ourselves. Mm. Let us bow our heads. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll take a couple of questions. Reverend Sharp, can we ask you, there, there's been some videos circulating this morning of young, we believe, Jewish men heavily, heavily armed with rifles in Rockland County. Uh, and other people are using the argument of what happened with the church in Texas over the weekend where there were security guards. Does this movement towards more people arming themselves in churches and synagogues to protect themselves does that concern you or? <clears throat> well, I, I, I would encourage us going into armed reaction. That's right. uh, That's right. I think that once you start that, then where will it end? That's right. That is why it is important we have a collective like this that would say that we need to really deal with a poison atmosphere That's right. and not deal with a, once you start arming people and once you start dealing with people that as stated by Donna that may have mental health issues, mm -hmm. then it's a question of who has the biggest gun. Right. We're trying to get the guns and the hate out. We're That's not right. trying to be better on. Uh, Reverend Chan, is it possible in Spanish? Yes. Oh, you don't like my Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> His Spanish is not too good looking. <laughs> eh, bueno, nosotros creemos que armarse no es la respuesta. La respuesta es trabajar con las agencias de la ley y asegurar de que el odio no exista en nuestra comunidad. Armarse puede perpetrar y, y puede aumentar otro tipo de problema. Yo creo que las agencias de la ley están en todo toda capacidad de responderle a esta crisis, nosotros debemos de hablar con ellos y eliminar el odio en este estado. I said what you said in Spanish. Proposals from our leaders, Governor Cuomo and, and Mayor de Blasio, from the mayor's side, uh, more security, more police patrols, and then you have the governor saying he wants a domestic terrorism law for these kinds of crimes, which presumably would affect more than just the Jewish community. What are your reactions to those? We have to look at both. Uh, we are in, certainly in touch with the governor. Someone from his office will be giving us the uh, legislation and the patrols, we have to talk to the mayor. It would be unfair for this collective to take a position that we've not seen and discussed. Well, what would you want to tell them? Would I would want to tell them that we need anti-hate legislation and we need to have uh, protection, but we need to also make sure that we do it with safeguards that we do not cause more problems than we solve. That's right. That's right. I'll take two more. You are denouncing anti-Semitism, but what's the next step? What is your plan? I think our next step is, as we said, to use our platforms, ministers, elected officials, media platform, to counter this and start building back in terms of the public uh, uh, pronouncements in the community. We need to stand up and get to those that think this way to understand that this is an attack against us. When That's you use right. hate against anyone, you use it against us. Secondly, to sit with the mayor and the governor right. to see how we could uh, in, be uh, cooperative and helpful if they, what they're proposing is the things that we can be helpful with. Yes, Actually, sir. Actually, with the leaders of the Jewish community. Right. Yeah. Maybe you can clear something up uh, from about 10 days ago. Uh, Carolyn Oliver's there, and then I 
identified as the first lady of the North Jersey NAN at one point um, in an article she co-wrote for Jersey Journal. Did she have any role uh, for National Act Action Network, or does she? Oh, this is a lady in Jersey City. She, you, uh, as you know, are you from Jersey? I'm not. Okay, then you uh, should. All you got to do is go on our site. The uh, state coordinator of uh, New Jersey, Reverend Steffi Bartley, denounced that they did not speak for uh, us. He called me while I was in Los Angeles for the debate. But is she or was she? I just answered you. Okay. But you're saying she was not ever? I said that he denounced it. I believe she was elected to an office that he suspended in her local chapter. Okay, thank you. Uh, that is why we clearly mentioned Jersey City this morning. All right, let me say before we dismiss, uh, uh, we uh, Assemblywoman Inez Dickens did join us yes. as well. All right, thank you very much.